and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Book. And I'm hunched in this position. This, I'm doing the second shelf of my bookshelf tour today. Lord knows what I'm gonna do when I'm gonna be getting down there. I'm gonna be laying on the floor like this. Um, so this is the second shelf of my bookshelf tour. These are banging against the thing and really annoying me. Let's get those out of the way. Um, here it is in all of its splendiferous glory. So it is mainly a blue shelf. Uh, we've got light blues up here. It did sort of go from that and I've just sort of like shoved things in where I can, put a few up there. And then we've got a few with purple in here. So it's mainly blue and purple. Um, I will work my way through as I did um, in my first video, which I will link down below. Um, I'm gonna make a playlist of my bookshelf tour. Um, it's a bit different to a um, ordinary bookshelf tour that I've watched before. Sort of, I don't just show the books, I talk about where they've come from and um, what if I know what they're about, etc. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, let me have a little adjust and see if I can get you any closer without <laughs> so if I was here hello these are my books <laughs> that's where I'll be in the corner so I have to have a bit of a hunch down but I'll adjust and see if we can do this any better so yeah so yes this is a little bit further down so so you can see but I'm going to I'm really hunched I have such lovely posture after this let me have a bit of my tea Lovely. So here we go. Let's start with The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. Um, this book was gifted to me by the lovely Simon at Savage Reads. Um, this is about, um, it's set in Australia, I believe, and it to, uh, women awake from a drug to sleep to find themselves at a sort of like um, a work camp where they have to work and then they realise that they've got um, a few bits in common, which they've all been involved in a sexual scandal, I believe. Um, I know Mercedes read this and didn't think it was great. The cover is absolutely brilliant. I'm a Absolutely brilliant, absolutely beautiful. It's similar to the vegetarian co um, cover in that it's, it looks beautiful at first and then you have a look closer and it's got things like there's a knife there, there's a jailer's um, set of keys there, there's a, um, a trap here and um, yeah, so things like that. But it's supposed to, uh, I, I don't, I'm looking forward to reading it but I've sort of heard mixed things about it. So that's what that. The next one is a book that I bought recently when I was in Wales. Um, I went into the Tesco there and they had two books for seven pounds. Um, and I was buying one for my friend Kate um, who I said that I'd buy, I'd bring her a book to read and I didn't so I had to go to Tesco's. Um, this is The Trouble With Goats and Sheep. Minnie's literally right there. Let me just turn around so you can have a little look at her. Hi, Minnie. Mm. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> there she is. Um, this is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. I've heard it's really, really great. It's told from uh, child, two children's perspectives and it's about a murder that, or no, someone's gone missing in the 70s in a, um, a British village. So I think I'm gonna really like this. The next one is another one that I bought myself when I was in Wales. I recently mentioned this on a book haul. It's Gone for Lunch, 52 Things to Do on Your Lunch Break by Laura Archer. Um, I really like the concept of this and I think maybe this might be a project of mine next year. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get a bit lower again. Uh, I think this might be a project of mine next year um, where I do things on my lunch. So it's, it's got things that you can do in whilst you're sitting. It's really just, it just looks beautiful inside. Um, things that you can do outside, um, things that you can do that are creative, not so creative, etc. And um, there's 52 weeks in the year. So I feel like maybe if I aim to do one of these a week next year, that's something I might get through. Um, I'll just give you some examples of things I've got in here. Commercial art galleries, there's none where I work. Um, write a novelette, um, write a letter, and draw a building. So yeah, just a few things. I just thought it was really, really cute. So I bought that from a shop called Window on Wales in um, St. David's in Wales. Next up, I've got a big stack of 100 Faber postcards. So that's the box that they came in. And um, I sort of changed these out. Let's change them now together. Um, I always try and keep them blue, or whatever shelf they're on, which they're normally on my blue shelf. I try to keep them blue, but they came, I got them for Christmas off of the, oh, there we go, look, Philip Larkin, the North Ship. That's a nice blue one. Um, they came from Faber um, as a Christmas present, which was very, very nice. So yeah, so I like to just to keep one facing out. And I will eventually get around to using these, I imagine to send to some bookish friends so that's what I do there I've just changed that there look there we go live changing now we've got one with a bit of blue writing on oh that's not going to go there and we've got some coloured pencils there but I'll put those down there there we go live sorting out of my bookshelves the next one I've got here is a book that David bought me for Christmas. This is Love From Boy by Roald Dahl. It's letters that his mother's written, uh, he's written to his mother. Now, for Christmas, David asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I gave him a massive long list of things, obviously. Um, but one of the things I did say that I wanted was him to just go into a bookshop and pick me a book himself that wasn't on any of my lists. Um, and he knows that I'm very fond of Roald Dahl, and he bought me this. I will get round to reading it soon, um, and I'm interested to read it. But yeah, it's uh, another bit. It's a big, big hardback book, this one. 
There we go, pop that in there. This one is uh, Rockadoon Shore by Rory Gleason. This is another one I picked up when I went to stay with Simon um, in January. Simon knows that I love books set in um, Ireland, and this one is set in Ireland, so he recommended that to me i'll do this one that's up here this is also one that i bought in wales when i went recently to st david's um this is under milk wood the definitive edition by dylan thomas this is a um a it's it's like a poem or a play it's a play it's a play um about a fictional village a fictional seaside town in wales um and it's been often made into a radio play and i must i, I have got it out from the library before and read it but i thought it's perfect to go to wales and buy a book um set in wales there so i bought that and i really really love this front cover i think it's really cool I'll leave that down there for the time being. The next one I've got is one that was sent to me by the publisher. It is Little Gold by Ali Rogers. I believe this is set in the 80s, yeah. The heat is oppressive and storms are brewing in, the Brighton, in Brighton in the summer of 1982. Little Gold, a boyish girl on the brink of adolescence, is struggling with the reality of her broken home and a home descending into chaos. Her only refuge is the tree at the end of her garden. So that's one there. Uh, the next one is a short story collection, also sent to me by the um, publishers. This is uh, Diving Bells by Lucy Wood. Um, this is a beautiful cover as well. Um, and this is, yeah, short stories all to do with um, nature, etc. Uh, this is a book that I got from the lovely Jen Campbell for my birthday. It's My Sister Lives on the Mantelpiece by Annabella Pilcher. Um, and I will get round to reading this as well. I'm not gonna, oh, look, there's a lovely little card in there she sent me. Um... Ten-year-old Jamie hasn't cried since it happened. Jasmine cried, Mum cried, Dad still cries. Roger didn't, but then he's just a cat and didn't really know Rose that well. Five years on, it's worse than ever. Dad drinks, Mum's gone, and Jamie's left with questions that he must answer for himself. So, yeah, sounds interesting. Childhood perspective. Childhood perspective. Child perspective. Oh, God, I'm getting really, really up. I might have to move you up a bit. Stretch! The next one is Swimming Home by Deborah Levy. I recently read, uh, oh no, I haven't. <laughs> keep getting out <laughs> hot milk from the library by Deborah Levy and I keep hearing uh, wonderful things about her writing. I bought this in um, Scoob, um, which is a bookshop in um, in London where I went on a booktuber meetup, I think last year. Um, so I must get round to reading that soon. The next one is another one from Simon. Um, this is The Dull Short Stories by Daphne du Maurier. So you'll notice this doesn't match my other Daphne du Maurier front covers that I like to keep. These is still published by Virago. They are Virago Modern Classics, but they're not the ones that I've got here. So this is a beautiful one to be holding onto, and I'm very p pleased and thrilled that Simon got this for me, but I'm still on the lookout for the new Virago Modern Classic one, which is like, I believe it's a stained glass window, um, and I'll replace that and um, re-gift this to somebody else when I get that. There we go. The next one is another short stories collection. This is gorgeous. Look at it. It's called Sea Lovers. It's by Valerie Martin. It's published by Serpent's Tale. And it's a, um, a short story collection. I think there's quite a lot of like sea monsters and things like that. I can't stop looking at that. Look at it. Oh, it's mesmerising forever. I think this is a mermaid's tale. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we've got another short story collection. This might be the short story collection shelf. This is, um, look at that, more foil. A Portable Shelter by Kirsty Logan. This is a collection of 13 short stories. Oh, I've got a little hungry little, hung a hungry little caterpillar um, bookmark there. This is a collection of short stories um, told between um, a couple, uh, one of which is pregnant and the other one. So the pregnant one tells um, the baby stories and then when the mummy with the baby and the tummy's asleep, the other mummy tells the stories when that mummy's asleep. Um, so yeah, they're supposed to be really good. I have read the first one. I don't remember anything about it. I want to commit some good time to this. It's just so beautiful. Annoyingly though, I started peeling off this um, sticker and it's just, it's just gone terribly and I don't want to... Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, excited about that. The next one is um, The Museum of Extraordinary Things by Alice Hoffman. Um, this was kindly bought for me by Aoife from the um, booktube channel Fred Weezy Died Laughing for my birthday. I believe this is a little like, um, what is that book called? The really popular circus one. The Night Circus? I was gonna say, the really popular circus one that's set at night, The Night Circus. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that. The next one is another book that I got from Simon. This is The Exiled by Katie Heikapelto. This is a Norwegian crime um, novel uh, about murder, corruption and dark secrets. So I do enjoy a crime every now and again. Um, and I will get round to reading this at some point. The next one, guess what? Another short story collection. It's Swimmer Among the Stars. These are, God, I've got some beautiful books on this shelf. This is another one with like this beautiful silver foiling here. Um, and it just, it's got the elephant nose on there and the elephant bum on there. This was sent to me by the publisher. Um, it's by Picador. Um, I think this has been published, uh, this has been free 
featuring quite frequently on um, booktube recently because a lot of people have been sent this um it's supposed to be amazing short story so i'm looking forward to getting to that the next one is Foxlow by Eleanor Vassenberg. Uh, Mercedes, uh, when we went on a booktuber meetup before, um, asked if anybody wanted this, and I said, yes, I would like this. Um, and um, I have this off of her. This is about a family um, who live at a place called Foxlow, um, and it's sort of like a family saga, I believe. I believe it's a bit strange. God, this is so gorgeous as well, isn't it? This is one of my, I haven't read this yet, obviously. Um, this is my TBR shelf, but this is one of the most beautiful books I think I've ever, like, front covers. I just love that front cover so much. The next is another from Simon. It is Fingle, Fingles, Fingles in the Sparkles Jar, Fingers in the Sparkle Jar by Chris Packham. It's a memoir. Chris Packham is quite a famous, um, you, quite, he, he's a um, pre uh, TV presenter and he presents mainly um, uh, nature shows. Um, and my dad and my boyfriend and I are all very fond of him. He says like really bonkers stuff when he's, when he's, um, when he's presenting things. I listened to a little bit of this audiobook and I didn't know if it was for me. Um, however, I am... Um, I, I like a, um, a memoir and I think a nature memoir would be lovely. I'm also going to lend this to my dad and see if he fancies it. I'm going to have a bit of drink now. But I love the title of it, uh, Fingers in the Sparkle Jar. I think it's lovely. The next one is the recently um, recommended for the Bailey's uh, Women's Prize for uh, Fiction. I believe it's on the shortlist. This is The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. This is a proof copy. I bought it from any amount of books in London. Um, and as I said, it's recently been shortlisted for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction. We're down to the last three, guys. We're getting there. The next one is The House Between Tides, a novel by Sarah Main. Um, this is one that I've also bought from any amount of books. A few, maybe like last August when I went on a booktuber meetup. Um, it says here on, it says on the front or on the back, is it? This is an echo of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, a highly readable debut. So Mercedes and I keep saying we're going to buddy read this together as she owns it too. It's published by Freight and I have yet to read a bad book that was published by Freight yet. Um, and haven't got around to it yet, but I will and I'm looking forward to it when I do. The next is a book that I bought when I was uh, book shopping in Edinburgh and that is The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winston. I'm yet to read any Jeanette Winston. That's a lie. I read um, some of her short stories out of her Christmas book last year but didn't finish it. Um, this is The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winston and this is about a baby girl who is abandoned, banished from London to the storm-ravaged American city of New Bohemia. Her father has been mid uh, driven mad by jealousy, her mother to exile by grief. 17 years later, Perdita doesn't know a lot about who she is or where she's come from but she's about to find out so yeah looking forward to reading some Jeanette Winterson uh, the last book I have on here is a, an author that is also featured on here it's Lucy Wood's novel Weathering um, this I read the first chapter of on um, one of my first chapter um, tag stories and it's about uh, the first chapter is very much set in the um, in the wild and in a river in fact um, and I believe it's all based around this river and um, it's very naturalistic um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that as well. That's a really nice cover too. So yeah, that is the second shelf on my bookshelf tour. Ah! Um, I hope you've all been enjoying it. I hope it's not. I can put this back up there now. Um, I hope you've all been enjoying my um, bookshelf tour. And yeah, they'll sort of be coming as and when. Not looking forward to getting laying down there. I think it's going to have to be a maybe. Show you them, yank them all out, and then do that. But that's something we can think about next time anyway. So I hope you're all well. And I'll see you all again on Friday for another booktube video. Bye. Cheers.